hi and welcome back to my channel or if you're new hi and welcome to my channel um continuing with the rising sun readings and yes i'm a bit late this time around again um but yeah we're up to the rising sign of cancer or i like to say cancerian or cancerian um yeah so that's, that's for this month of september we're already in september as i'm filming this um yeah and i like to say the headlines um of anything astrology wise that's going on in the skies um you know at any particular time and most of you will probably know we've got a whole bunch of retrogrades i i call it retrograde alley um quite frankly the only one that's not retrograde is mars and he because he was retrograde last year um and he retrogrades about once every 18 months i think it is um the sun and moon are considered planets in the in the chart but they never go retrograde so we don't have to worry about that chiron's also retrograde <laughs> so yeah um now venus is still retrograde as i'm filming this she's going to be stationing direct i think it's around about the fifth over here i think anyway um and very soon after jupiter's going to go into retrograde venus although she'll be stationed direct um she'll then be moving into her post shadow phase so she's not going to be completely out of the retrograde until my guess is um about the 5th of october and i've i need to kind of clarify something because i was thinking that the um eclipses weren't happening till further along in the year near around december but i confused it with the fact that um, Jupiter's retrograde phase will actually be, um, he'll be stationing direct on the 30th of December. So that's where I got it um, mixed up. But the actual eclipses are happening next month. So the new moon eclipse, I think, will be the 14th or 15th of October. We're in September at the moment. Um, and the full moon eclipse will be two weeks later. So near the end of, of September then. Um yeah but with, with with the eclipses they're so powerful that at least three months either side of the actual eclipse phase um the pre-shadow like the retrogrades pre-shadow and then the phase and then the post shadows so three months either side so we're already in the eclipse doorway of both the um, solar and lunar new moon and full moon eclipses anyway um so yeah so there's a lot of energies going on and we don't need to fear them as if we're doing what we can you know to work towards bettering our lives from a non-egotistical standpoint then we're not going to be hit negatively by them if that makes sense um and a lot of the time you'll hear with mercury retrograde don't sign contacts don't get into a relationship don't do this don't do that blah 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 um I mean, if if you're with a with a contract, obviously we always have to read the fine print, see what we're getting into. We don't always have to agree to a contract. We don't have to sign a contract, um, but we can look into it. Um, you know, to see what's available. That's the whole point of the retrogrades to see it's showing us what's available to us, depending on which planet is in retrograde and what sign they're retrograding in and what where it hits in us in each of our signs for our houses um in our chart um yeah, with eclipses they want us to move forward in our lives they want us to better our lives and if we're holding on to things that are sabotaging us in some way then if we don't do the work to remove that then the, the eclipses are powerful and come along and go right well you're not doing anything about it so i will so that's where it can be really difficult energy to work with and it can be pretty much devastating i've had a few devastating eclipse moments tower moments i call them um when i wasn't aware of how powerful the eclipse energies were i do i know now so um you know i do all i can to 
to look into what areas it might be trying to show me to clear away um, so that I don't get the negative side of the um, eclipses. And it's the same with um, any sign, sign house, whatever, will have positives and negatives. And it depends on how we work with it um, and what we're prepared to um, be honest with ourselves about, you know, as to how it will play out for us. Um, yes, yeah, so signing contracts, obviously we always have to um, look into what's going on and whether we decide for ourselves whether we want to or not or whether we need to get some further information or some help with understanding contracts even. Um, but like I said a few months back, say things like, um, I mean, if you're signing a contract to go into business partnership with someone and whatever, yeah, then get make sure that... Um, both parties are being genuine and 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 there's um in in that sense you want to go into it with an open if both parties have an open sort of attitude of um being um aware of the option to grow evolve change within it over time you know and the same with whether i mean in in terms of a contract, whether it's a physical contract or an emotional contract, like getting in a relationship, if you're getting, if you, if both parties are getting in a relationship where you both open to evolving, growing, changing together, then it's going to work out. And the same with business as well. If that's the attitude, it's going to work out. If someone, if one or both of you are going into it with ego. Um, then it's not going to work out, you know. So, it, it, for instance, ego in the sense of getting a business partnership or partnering with someone because of, you know, self-gain in some way, it's, that it's not actually improving your or anyone's life, you just want something for the sake of it, then it's not going to work out. And if you are stubborn in, in terms of wanting to go into a relationship with set priorities of this is how you want it to be and nothing else then it's not going to work out that way either because you're not being flexible and open so that's where we have to work out okay the retrogrades are showing us this we've got to do our best to be flexible and open with things and or work through things whatever the retrogrades are trying to show us and if we're not sure what it's trying to show us Ask it. Simply ask the universe or ask the the planet that's retrograding, what do you want me to see here? What do you want me to work on or work through? Um, and if, if you've got a strong connection with your spiritual team, then, you know, the team in spirit, yay, yeah, with the universe, then you can um, ask there as well and get get some ideas because sometimes the universe will show us things sort of gentle nudges um often we will ignore them or not or dismiss them or not know not realize that that's where we're being needing to be shown or led to you know that that's where the universe and spirit is guiding us to look into this certain area or whatever um it doesn't have to be complex and difficult. That's, you know, that's the bottom line. Um, and like I said a few months back with, um, again, with contracts in in, in respect of um, how it can work in your favour. Um, so like I said a few months back, if your car's falling apart and it's dangerous to drive, but you're going, I can't do anything because Mercury's retrograde. But that's actually the opposite. Mercury's retrograde and wanting you to do something about it, wanting you to perhaps get a, a, a loan for, for a, a car uh, new or used, you know, because by um, replacing, see the re's, by replacing it, you're in a better position where it's safer and it's improving your life and the lives of others. And the same with whether it's buying a house, the same thing if you're not doing it from just simply ego, wanting some status symbol. Um, if you're doing it to better yourselves and others' lives, then it's going to work in your favour and you don't need to fear signing a contract in that sense. Um, what else do I want to say? I feel like there was something else, but I can't pinpoint what it is at this point. Um, but yeah, hopefully I've given you some sort of idea of 
how the, how to work with the energies because they shouldn't be feared. They're here to help us grow and evolve and change. That's the whole point. Sticking ourselves, you know, in the quicksand isn't going to help anything. Um, so, yeah, sometimes, especially with eclipses, we have to be brutally honest about what is um, holding us back, what's sabotaging us, whether it's self-sabotage or something or someone else sabotaging us and what needs to go so that the, the better can come in for us. And when we're looking at those things, that means we're doing the work and it means that the eclipse energies are going to go, oh, okay, we'll flitter off and look for someone else who's not doing the work, you know. It's that simple, it really is. Um, anyway, I think I've gone on long enough. So for the Cancer Rises, Cancerian, Cancerian, um, what's going on? <laughs> full moon in September. Well, we just had a full moon and we, while I'm filming this, we um, are still in the full moon kind of phase. The, the, the following two weeks leading up to the new moon. Um, so we're still in full moon phase. Um, th there might be also a full moon right near the end of the month though as well so we can keep that in mind okay so I think the new moon is around about the 12th so 25th or something might be around the time of the next full moon and that's about releasing so it's pretty much what I've been yabbering on about um seventh house libra themes not in libra for you where is it uh i think that's capricorn yeah because cancer's your rising sign so directly opposite is your descendant which is um capricorn um career ambition 10th house themes in the libra um relationship house leo well, the Leo energies come through a bit because um, Venus has been retrograding Leo. She's since moved into Cancer. Um, and, of course, once she goes direct, she'll start moving out of Cancer again into Leo. Leo is your second house, money and self-worth. Fun, creativity, romance, all that sort of thing. Neptune might be wherever Neptune is placed for you in your chart. But Neptune's the ruler of Pisces and twelve Pisces and twelfth house. And Neptune's also <laughs> in retrograde. Neptune's retrograde in Pisces, actually. Hmm. Where's Pisces for you? Pisces is I think um, ninth house, yeah. Eleventh house. Well, that's Aquarius themes, which is in Taurus for you. Again, we've got the money and self-worth thing. Taurus in the 11th house, Leo in the second, which is Taurus themes. Ninth house, Sag themes. And that is in Pisces. Okay, so we've got a bit of Pisces. Pallas Athena. Ooh, that's a, um, she's an asteroid. She's, she's quite a, um, powerful asteroid too because, um, she's known as the warrior goddess. And it's about, um, weighing up the pros and cons of situations. Hmm. So we've got 11th house community themes in Taurus. We've got 9th house Sag themes in Pisces. Pisces Neptune is the ruler of Pisces. And then we've got Capricorn in Libra, in the Libra house. So there's definitely community and relationships weighing up the pros and cons letting go of what no longer serves that sort of thing what else have we got eros Ooh. that's about creativity and sexuality and we've got again we've got the um libra themes there 
what else Aquarius well Aquarius themes of the 11th house Aquarius is in your eighth so again ooh, that's Scorpio themes <laughs> next to Eros okay okay um right <laughs> Hmm. Well, it's letting go of something. Perhaps you need to be more open to this. Hmm. Weighing up the pros and cons of maybe a romantic situation or creativity. Could be creativity. Virgo. Six house themes, but it's not in six house, it's in third for you. The energy around you is dutiful, hesitant, and humble with a discriminating, diligent, and painstaking air. I laugh at painstaking because I've got a lot of Virgo in my chart. <laughs> I can annoy myself at how painstaking I am with some things. Um, health, duty, service to others, that sort of thing, which is interesting because we've got the Scorpio and Eros and community. So there's some sort of deepness and creativity. Health, duty, service to others. Um, well, definitely the energy of letting go first. And we are in now in as i said in full moon energies as it were and there'll be another full moon at the end of the month well, i say another but like the last full moon was a blue moon um at the end of august sun being sun's the ruler of um leo Scorpio, the animal. Perhaps let yourself go and be the animal sort of thing in a way. Be, dare to be different. Dare to bring out your creativity. Leo again. Sun ruled Leo. The lover. <laughs> We've got Harris. Okay. A Scorpio and Leo and Eros, okay. Uranus, revolution, okay, so something needs to be shaken up and moved around. Letting go of something so that something better can come in. Pisces, the mystic, we had Neptune and we had Pisces as well, didn't we? Where's Pisces again? Ninth house, yeah. The mystic. Opposition, balance. Balancing the opposites. You're, you're, um, see, oppositions aren't always a bad thing. Far left at, what is it, 9 o'clock, if you're still using analog clocks. Um, far left, will you'll find your ascendant. Far right, you'll find your descendant. Your descendant, as, as I said earlier, um, is Capricorn. And whatever signs we are, through our lives, um, the idea is to try and meld the two, like have a balance between the two opposites of your rising sign and your descendant sign, the same as your work life and your home life and the top and bottom of your chart. Okay, so you've got quite a few of these cards too coming through. So, <clears throat> okay, my throat's going again, so... There may be re a need to speak up about something, communicate. Um, Virgo's in your third, so yeah, and it's pretty much in the centre of the reading. So I'd say that um, communication, speaking up, is going to be um, key to this in some way. Okay, so we'll see what cards came through with you for these. 
You had quite a few cards and there may be a reversal or not. We'll see what comes through. No, <laughs> first thing is reversal. Solar flares activate. Hmm. I feel like it's what's been going on is the opposite. There's been lack of activity um, for some reason, but you can turn that around. Okay, we'll see what else comes through because I haven't, gosh, okay, try and sextile, symbiosis. Hmm, something's been blocking you and or others. Something has been blocking. We've got the full moon. So, um, definitely releasing of something. Whether Eros comes through as creativity with regards to community in some way. Or, in some way, some community has somehow been blocking your creativity or um, in some way, yeah. Um, what else, though? Something else was about to come through and I've lost it. Um... If you've been holding back because of other people's, you know, that you perhaps want to please others, well, you know, you should please you as well. You're part of the equation too. Yeah, because you want these easy energies to work in your favour. I think there's been something that's been holding you back. Whether that's yourself or certain perceptions, this is the time for us with all these retrogrades to change perspectives and, and look at things in different ways. I know it's it's been the case for me that there's been a couple of things that I had a specific way I thought about it and I've just been completely turned completely the opposite way now and, and unexpectedly to me it was but I get it now because it was the retrogrades that were showing me hey that's not the way to look at it that's not the opinion you should have or whatever this is the whole thing that we need to be open and receptive to what they're trying to show us Pluto rebirth see this is upright Uranus as well, see? And Pluto's the ruler of Scorpio and the 8th house, which is, uh, isn't that in Aquarius, I think, isn't it? Uh, yes. That's upright, and it's saying rebirth. So you can have a rebirth of whatever's going on. Of, uh, like, from whatever's going on. Like, um, yeah. Release whatever's been holding you back, or whoever, perhaps. Dare to be you, you know. Dare to bring out whatever you've been hiding or holding back. See, this is holding back energy here. This is saying activate and symbiosis. They're the ones you want turned around the other way, you know. Trines and sextiles are really easy energies. You want that flipped back over. In fact, I want to flip it over now because I think you can. Easy going, easy flowing energies. Dare to allow yourself to be seen. 
Where's Aries again for you? Aries is in your 10th. And that's, I say that because that's where Jupiter's going to be retrograding for you in your 10th house. And Mercury is in Leo as well. Mercury rules the, the um, sign of Virgo. And didn't we get Gemini? Did we get Gemini come through for you? That's 12th house. Well, we've got Pisces coming through. Hmm. No, I don't think we've got 12th house. What's this? Third house again, Gemini themes, communication. Leo isn't, no, Virgo. Virgo's um, in your third house. Gemini themes covered by the sign of Virgo. Virgo's come through twice. So health, duty, service to others. But it can also be, um, excuse me, um, it can also be looking after you will have the effect of being of service to others by taking care of you as well, it's not opposing your needs. You know, not being in opposition of finding balance with your needs as well as others. Virgos very much like that, that they can sort of forget themselves. So can Pisces in a way. Virgo and Pisces sort of, you know, to the point where they don't know where they end and the other person begins, so to speak. Give to yourself and um, look, take care of whatever you need to clear away, or whoever, um, so that you can bring in the energies that you want. You've got ninth house, eleventh house, and seventh house. So a lot of communication with others is possible. And I turned, I, I did turn that around because I feel like it can work in your favour if you're open to it. And, and as I said in the start of the whole video, by working with the eclipse energies and the retrogrades and being open to what they want to show us to work on, no matter what sign we are, if we're open and we're, we're doing all we can, then we're, we're tapping into that energy. I mean, you, just because um, I mentioned about contracts doesn't mean you have to actually sign a contract, You but you might look into it and that in that way you're working with the retrograde energies because you're allowing yourself to see what's available to you what what is possible you don't have to agree to it and sign it sign it up for it or whatever but by looking into certain things depending on what you know what the retrogrades are showing you you know I guess if, if you went to the supermarket and, and um, you had the choice of whether you wanted to buy a bag of 10 apples or you just wanted to pick up three, same sort of thing. Um, you know, it's whatever is offered to you and what you're wanting to choose from that, you know, if you're wanting to make a choice with that or whether choosing to not do it at all, that's still a choice. But at least being open to looking into what the retrogrades are trying to show you and the eclipses, what needs to be worked on and cleared up and tweaked and changed or whatever so that you can be in the best possible position to get all the benefits from the retrogrades and the eclipses. Scorpio. Yeah, we'll see. No wonder it's in reverse because investigation... Is probably needed or I mean it could be the other way around where you've done enough investigating and now you know what needs to be cleared so you need to then go right that's got to go because I need the space to be open so the universe can bring in what I want <laughs> moon perception Wow yeah, well, with the retrograde energies, it's no surprise there's a few reversals here. And the moon, um, 
you know, being in reverse, um, it says perception, there could be some fears, because we're also looking at the full moon here, see, things that need to be let go of that might be sabotaging you in some way, whether that's fears or situations that, you know, Sometimes it can be scary to move out of a certain situation, you know, just in our perception we might sort of fear what 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 sort of uh, we can what what sort of future might be going on after we make this decision. And so we stay stuck and don't make the decision. And then, you know, if we're hanging on tooth and nail to a situation or something or someone that we know is no good for us that's holding us back that's like i said earlier that's where the eclipses are going to go well if you're not doing anything about it i'm going to take it from you that's that because it needs to go end of story so you can be in the driver's seat with this and work through whatever it is that needs to be let go of because a lot of other things can then come in that actually will work in your favor and there'll be a rebirth definitely and see the communication card is also up right here with the gemini third house things uh, third house gemini things whatever so communication is needed and it might just be as simple as you communicating what your needs are you showing whoever um that being more open to be you perhaps perhaps you've been holding back and sort of you know not being yourself or not in some way not um not or have maybe having a fear of letting people see the real you but this i think is telling you don't fear that so you've got lots of fears here going on you know, with these reverse cards as well. It might not be for everyone, but you know, whoever I'm tapping into, this is this is what it's telling me so far. Clear away any fears because they're holding you back and you don't need them. You'll find balance by doing that. What else have we got? Saturn. Well, Saturn's in retrograde right now. Saturn is the ruler of Capricorn. Did we get any Capricorn energy coming through? Capricorn's in... Oh, yeah, seventh. Your descendant. Yeah, balancing. Balancing your ascendant and descendant. And Saturn... See, this is a thing. You don't have to be jumping... 5,000 miles an hour to get everything done Saturn is showing you you can take your time you can take it easy and see this is why I turned this up the trine remember easy go easy flow energy that's why I turned it upright instead of reverse because with the Saturn there showing you that you can still accomplish things taking it incrementally and going with the flow slowly but surely and it can be an easy go, easy flow energy rather than stressing and letting things hold you back constantly so you can't move forward. Because if you're not going to work through things, um, well, the eclipses aren't going to make it easy for you, let me tell you. Because I've been there enough times to know I don't want it happening again to myself, you know. So you can definitely be in the driver's seat. Sometimes we just really have to be brutally honest about what we're holding on to or what's actually sabotaging us, whether that's ourselves, whether it's a situation, whether it's another person, and how we can step back and have less of that so that we can bring in more of what we actually want. Conjunction alliance. See, here we go again. I, I feel like you've perhaps... Here we go with the 11th house energies that you perhaps feel a little um, disconnected. Because this is, you know, this says alliance and this is very much the Aquarius group 
thing. And I think um, something, I kind of want to say it's perhaps your own perceptions. Didn't we get perception somewhere? Yeah. Whether that's perceptions about you, yourself, like your, your um, how you show yourself to the world, that, that perhaps you're not feeling... Hmm. Perhaps you're feeling inadequate in some way when that is not the truth. That's your perception, but it's not true. Dare to show yourself to the world so that because it's going to be easy going, easy flowing, activate. Activate your self worth. Didn't we get Taurus in some way? Taurus is in your 11th. Yeah, boom, money and self-worth. What's in your second house? Leo. Leo came through as well. Leo. Fun, creativity, children, romance, all that. Um, In the second house of Taurus themes, money and self-worth again. Yeah, this is a self-worth thing, friends. I've got a feeling you guys had this once before, this sort of energy going on you need to know that you are a worthwhile person that the perception that you have of yourself you know how you know how there's that saying rose colored glasses you know with people that you know if, if someone's looking at things way too um, optimistically well I think this is the opposite with you that you've got <laughs> you've got um what's it called the um black colored glasses that that your the perception you have of you perhaps is <laughs> How do I want to put it? What do you guys want me to say? Um, it's the, it's like, you know, if you've got the camera going, but you've turned down the light. So say if I turned the light off, like, look, I'm going to do it right now. How much can you see now? Not much, can you? Now I turn the light on. So the perception is completely different. I think what you're looking at is what you just saw a couple of minutes, a few seconds ago. That's your perception. But this is how the world sees you. The beautiful colours, the brightness. You can form alliances with people by loving yourself. By seeing yourself as a worthwhile person because you darn well are and you need to know that, I think. Whoever's, whoever this is for, yeah. That perception, that's how dark it, it, it has been for you and it needs to go. That's what you need to clear away. You need to switch that light on because, it, because everyone else is seeing you with this light, you know. Um... 12th house introspection again with the reversal the introspection for you has been negative what I'm getting it's been negative and that needs to turn around and also this is in reverse so the, the negative introspection needs to end now you need to switch that light on and, and see see the beauty of you like everyone else does. Hmm. Leo. Sun rules Leo. Bring the fun back into your lives. The creativity, you know. Clear away negative perceptions that are holding you back. 
whether that's perceptions of you as a person or whether that's perceptions of the world that you the way you've been seeing it that way perhaps switch that light on it's not as dark and gloomy as as you've been making it it's not dark and gloomy you you saw the difference it was completely dark when i had that ring light off now it's bright again okay so I hope this is making sense um, and gets to whoever needs it. Um, but yeah, you need to know that you are worthy of being loved. You are worthy of friendships and all the abundance and wonderful things that can happen for you. Definitely need to shake things up, shake your perception up in some way because How's it been working for you so far? Because by the look of these, it hasn't been working so great to have that dark perception. Switch the light on and have a brighter perspective because then you'll see the universe will bring more brightness your way. Okay, so what numerology for the Cancian Rises? Spirit, what do you want them to know? For September... What numerology did the cancer rises need to know September? Sorry that this has been sort of like, you know, heavy going. I'm pretty sure you guys have had one of these readings recently again too. You had one a while back. So yeah. Oop. So we got the one and it says financial discipline. Now this is heart chakra. And see, this is uh, with, with Taurus themes of second house covered by Leo, money and self-worth is what I narrow down Taurus themes as. Um, Taurus is also in your 11th, so it's reiterating the money and self-worth. Financial discipline. Now, whether um, you've been overspending, perhaps, you all, no shade, I've done it myself. Um, and I'm not, obviously, I'm not cancer rising, you know, that's beside the point. Anyone can do that. Um, but, yeah, financial discipline, because I think in general... Because I, th I think that um, while you're waiting for the money to come in, so to speak, fix up things for yourself that are going to get you in a better position. And that requires you changing your perception on something, whether it's your view of the world, whether it's your view of a person, whether it's your view of a community, whether it's a, a, your view of yourself. Something has kept you in the dark for way too long and now you need to switch that light on and see what everyone else can see of you because it's safe to do that. Um, but yeah, I think with um, try to be financially, um, have financial discipline while you're clearing away whatever so that when the new moon energies come through then you're going to get your um, abundance coming through as well and the heart chakra is really focusing on the self-worth thing um, four is the number of the builder eight is stability and money four and eight is three which is action activity and communication we had the seventh house um which is and and the eleventh house, which are both. Uh, did we get Gemini? I thought we did. Um, Gemini's twelfth house. No, I don't think so. 
Mm. Lots of Leo energy though, because Leo's Leo's arguably the most fun sign, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. Anyway, it's the e most argue, arguably the most easygoing of signs in my perception, at least. Anyway, um, perception. See, so I'm I'm perceiving something positive. I guess you can say. I'm not saying that all the other. That, well, there you go again. I'm not saying that all the other signs are negative. Just because I think Leo is one of the easiest signs to work with, um, but every sign has positives and negatives. I mean, you can have the ego, the egotism, egotism. You know, on the negative side, Leo can be egotistical. So can Aries. Um, but yeah, so it can it might be something simple, but it just I feel like um, you've kept yourself in the dark for a long time, and now you need to turn that light on and see what everyone else sees and enjoy what everyone else is enjoying. Don't be a wallflower and just watch everyone else enjoy life and you not. No, clear that away. Because um, I've got it up in the notes right away. Because if you don't, you know, just put your seatbelt on because the um, eclipses are coming through, whether we like it or not. <laughs> so doing what we can to um, work through anything that's sabotaging us in any way is going to be the best way forward. Okay, so what do the Cancer Rises need to know, Spirit? What do you want them to know about abundance? This deck, this particular deck comes, um, is set up like the universe is speaking directly to you about abundance. So we're looking at messages of abundance for you guys for September. <clears throat> okay, what do they need to know about abundance for September? Okay, we're getting specific here. Cancer rises abundance for September. What does it need to know? Here we go. Okay, is there anything else that you want to bring through to this? Is there anything else? Okay. that one too okay okay so we've got some water scenes here in fact all three have got a water scene no surprise since you're a water sign Today you are a magnet for infinite abundance see there it is divine intelligence and unlimited love exactly show love to yourself and it will be sent back to you actually this has always been true rock on the universe exactly love yourself and more will come in more abundance more love more everything that you need we all need but i think especially you with all these energies you really need at this point whoever this is for um, you wondering how would be as silly as me wondering why remember it's the universe talking to you I don't and neither should you I mean let's not be that crazy the universe yeah don't be stressing about the how of what might change or what might something might be like if you dare to step out and and make a change to your perception or to your situation in some way because you know letting go changing tweaking changing whatever it is that's needed to switch that light on so you can see what everyone else sees of the world and you of you you know the the actual truth you're not you whoever this is specifically for whichever can see and riser this is for whoever. It, 
think it's um, definitely a few of you out there that are needing this. Um, yeah. I think that um, the perception has been skewed and you've been in the dark for a long enough time. That light needs to go on. Um, One million dollars is a lot only when you don't have it. With 10 million, 1 million can practically be overlooked and is therefore much less intimidating. Pretend you have 10 million to the bank, the universe. And this is what I was saying. The abundance does want to come through. Uranus, revolution, shaking things up, Pluto, rebirth. See, this doesn't have to be heavy energy anymore. Haven't you had enough? You know? Okay, let's... Sorry to get in your face, but at the same time, I'm not sorry. Weighing up the pros and cons. What's your perception been like? Because it seems like that that light... Uh, or change the light bulb. <laughs> Maybe you, the light has gone out and you need to change the light bulb. Perception. Change the perception. See? I know I'm sort of making a bit of a joke about it but you know it doesn't have to be difficult anymore life should not be um a chore it shouldn't be um unpleasant it shouldn't be difficult you know while you're doing the work be you know financially you know, have some discipline because a lot of the time I can be an emotional buyer sometimes if I feel like, oh, you know, like, like, um, you know, what do they call it? Um, mm, retail therapy. <laughs> Thankfully, I don't do that too often um, these days, but I had done it in the past and sort of like, oh, damn, I really shouldn't have bought X, Y, or Z, um, because I did it on a whim, because I just sort of, you know, kind of to fill a gap or whatever at the time, I suppose, in a way, because I was acting with my emotions and not my logic. Um, so in that sense, I guess, financial discipline. But I think that this card particularly isn't so much about the financial discipline. It might be for some people, but I think... What was reiterating was more the above part, like the heart chakra is at the centre of it all. And this comes to a three. Remember the builder, stability and money, and then three, communication, action, activity. I think that's where, because that was what I was sort of kept looking at more. Because the financial discipline seems almost like, um, doesn't, like, how do I put it? It's almost like it's sort of there but not there, if it makes sense. It's not It's not the thing that's um, that I keep coming through. So I see it, but then I see that constantly as well. So it's like that is more prominent for me, the top part of that card. Okay, so let's see. Um, I don't know if that makes any sense to you. But um, what do the guardian angels want you guys to know? Is there any other messages from the guardian angels? Do you can't see the roses. Do you want that one? Okay. Okay, well done. Okay, so what have we got here? Yeah, I think um Yeah, I think with that bit of work you can bring uh, once you've cleared away whatever skewed perception has been happening for you or against you really because if it's been that way then it's been against you whether that's again like I said whether that's your own perception 
Mm. It's still a perception though anyway, that being your perception, whether that's the, the, the whether that's perception of yourself or the world or a situation or a, a group or whatever. Um, yeah, you have to, in that sense, I guess the discipline can come through to be courageous enough to um, change that perception, to clear it away so that you can start enjoying life again. Okay. <laughs> oh, conflict. Feelings which you have suppressed for a very long time. <laughs> Can't make this stuff up. Um, are yearning to be acknowledged and expressed. You are torn between what you think is the right thing to do and what your heart wants. Heart chakra, remember? Um, and this is the primary cause of stress in your life. Wow. We, your angels, urge you to follow your heart. Do what you would love, not what you think you should. Exactly. Clear away any negativity, judgment. Oh, man. Um, let go of your fear of being judged. See, the animal, she's not caring about who thinks what. She's proudly showing herself. Um, let go of your fear of being judged. You are good enough. It is time to release, full moon, release, whether that's now or at the end of the month as well, um, because we're still in the full moon energies really for the next week or so until the new moon comes um, and then the full moon near the end of the month again. Um, it is time to release all that you have kept safely locked away in your heart. Your true essence and potential have been restricted by structure and method for long enough. Remember, the light was off. It has to turn on or you'll because you haven't been able to see things in their glory in the way that the universe wants you to see them um there is no right or wrong way just be you wow C courage <laughs> dare to be different to make mistakes create leo ninth house create for it is in creation that you exist. In this world of dreams that stem from the eternal heart, you are one with all creation. All is possible. Go forth and be true to yourself. Like I've been saying, spirit was getting it through me. Yep, speaking through me. Um, go forth and be true to yourself. For it is only through being true to you that you can be true to others. And that's again reiterating what I said earlier the knock-on effect of <clears throat> working on yourself that will also benefit others as well because it will benefit you and others. And that's a win-win, which Libra, yeah, Libra themes of Seventh House likes the win-win situation. Inspiration. Oh, this is a wonderful card to end on, guys. A wave of inspiration and a stream of beautiful ideas are about to enter your aura. It is important that you trust your intuition at this time. Pay attention to unusual thoughts that come to your mind and do not discount your imagination or what you, the universe is trying to show you, like I said earlier. Um, many wonderful ideas which have served humanity were initially scoffed at or ridiculed. We, your guardian angels, will help you discover ways to apply your ideas and manifest new realities for your life. See? Change those perceptions. Switch on that light. Change the light bulb. Whatever is needed, clear it up with the help of the full moon so that you can be ready for the new moon and the new moon eclipse next month, which really we've got the energies now. Get yourself in the driver's seat of your own life. Get those perceptions, those skewed, dark perceptions out of the way. Let me read this again. Um, we, your guardian angels, will help you discover ways to apply your ideas and manifest new realities for your life. Boom. Double drop the mic. <laughs> okay, I think you get the point, friends.
whoever's been going through this dark energy, switch that light on. You've had enough darkness for long enough. These, the retrogrades, the eclipses, the full moon energy, it's all pretty much screaming at you. Things have to change. Revolution has to happen with yourself. Rebirth. Rebirth. Your life wants you, if that makes sense. Your new life wants you. Um, and what you want wants you. I want to say that as well. The universe wants you to enjoy life, to feel fulfilled and happy, not to stay in darkness with the light switched off and with dark perceptions because how, how have they worked for you so far? Clearly they haven't. Heart chakra. Open your heart. Be bold. Be courageous. Tap into that fun Leo energy. And get rid of the drama. You don't need it anymore. Have the courage to step out and be you. And you're an amazing person and you need to know that. Okay. I, abundance is coming for you. See? Imagine you've got 10 million and the 1 million will come through. Yeah. See? Open yourself to love and abundance and love and abundance will come back. Love yourself abundantly and love and abundance will come back to you in so many different ways on that note i'm getting teary <laughs> on that note i wish you all the best of luck for september and definitely onwards and please tap into all these powerful energies that want to work in your favor i hope you do i wish you all the best of luck for this month and onwards and until next time, bye for now.